Hello, welcome to a lecture on basic tissues. We are looking at epithelium and glands. Now, epithelial tissues are tissues that either cover or line cavities. Now, when they cover, it means that they are going to cover surfaces, all right? And then when they line, they are going to line cavities or lumen. So surfaces like the skin, okay? Is covered by a covering epithelium and that of the GIT the stomach uh, respiratory system like the trachea have linings okay so we call them lining epithelia now it is important for you to appreciate the fact that there are certain characteristics of epithelial tissues now, epithelial tissues is actually only one of the four basic tissues. The other ones are the connective tissues, the nervous tissues, and then the muscle tissues. So today, we want to concentrate on the epithelial tissues. So as we have already talked about, in the diagram, you would see uh, some cells sitting on a flat surface. Okay, so the cell has a nucleus and the uh, surface it is sitting on is a basement membrane so you can see the nucleus of the cell as well as the cytoplasm now we can classify epithelia based on uh, their shape and the number of cell layers so we want to take the number of cell layers if it has one cell layer we say it is simple if it has more than one cell layer we say it is what stratified so for simple you can have the shape being flat or squamous or square-like called cuboida or taller than wide which we call columnar and if it is stratified you only use the topmost layer and the shape of that topmost layer to describe that kind of epithelium so if there's a stratification where the topmost layer is squamous or flat you see it is what stratified squamous if the topmost layer is cuboidal, you say it is a stratified cuboidal and so on. There's another type that uh, hangs in the balance between simple and stratified because it will look like it is stratified and yet you can't count uh, separate layers because all the cells sit on the basement membrane but not all of them reach the surface. We call such um, uh, epithelia the pseudo-stratified columnar epithelia which is usually found in the respiratory system now the epithelia we have described can be found in several structures okay being it organs glands um, uh, coverings and and the linings and so on and so forth okay so they are peculiar to specific areas of the body and they are related to the function okay so the function of that part of the area with its epithelium will um, demand whether it should be simple or stratified and whether it should be squamous or what cuboidal or whether it should be columnar or not so most of the time if it's an area which needs protection then you talk of what stratification so that you increase the number of cells there to resist or withstand any abrasion or erosion or um, harshness okay from the environment all right so the skin for instance is exposed to the environment the sun ultraviolet rays and what have you it is stratified squamous the vagina is stratified squamous because of the intercourse and the coitus that occur in that organ because of the back and forth penetration you need stratification to reinforce the area if it's just simple it's going to tear and then cause damage to that structure so always bear in mind that for every epithelium it is related to its function if it is for simple passage of oxygen you will need a simple epithelium to enhance the passage of the the, the, the substance in this case oxygen so in the alveoli for instance you will need a, a simple a squamous now epithelial cells have several characteristics okay i have mentioned some of them in my introduction one is the fact that it sits on a flat surface known as a basement membrane the other is that it can be either a, a one cell layer 
or what several cell layers. Others are the fact that they are avascular, okay? They are avascular, which means that they do not have their own blood supply. So think about it. How are they going to survive if they don't have their own blood supply? There should be something to give, all right? So think about that. So that's one of the characteristics. Again, I've mentioned that depending on the number of cell layers, you can also describe or characterize an epithelia. I've also talked about the shape of the cells, okay? And then also they are polarized, okay? So they have apical uh, domains, they have basal domains and lateral domains. So these are like points of contact, okay? We have the top part of the cell sitting on the basement membrane and then the base of the cell, which is actually in touch with the basement membrane itself. And because there are several layers sitting on that uh, flat surface, it means that you have another cell joining on the lateral side. So we say that it has apical, basal, and what lateral domains. Now, some of these apical domains may have surface specializations like cilia and hair or microvilli. Then also, the epithelia can regenerate, okay, or uh, renew itself. All right, so these are seven major characteristics that you have to remember uh, when you talk about epithelia. All right, so um, bear in mind that aspect of it. We will continue later and look at the other portions of the characteristics in details. Thank you. Hello, welcome to a lecture on basic tissues. We are looking at epithelium and glands. Now, epithelial tissues are tissues that either cover or line cavities. And when they cover, it means that they are going to cover surfaces, all right? And then when they line, they are going to line cavities or lumen. So surfaces like the skin, okay, is covered by a covering epithelium. And that of the GIT, the stomach, uh, respiratory system like the trachea have linings okay so we call them lining epithelia now it is important for you to appreciate the fact that there are certain characteristics of epithelial tissues now epithelial tissues is actually only one of the four basic tissues the other ones are the connective tissues the nervous tissues and then the muscle tissues so today we want to concentrate on the epithelial tissues. So as we have already talked about, in the diagram, you would see uh, some cells sitting on a flat surface. Okay, so the cell has a nucleus and the surface it is sitting on is a basement membrane. So you can see the nucleus of the cell as well as the cytoplasm. Now, we can classify epithelia based on uh, their shape and the number of cell layers. So, we want to take the number of cell layers. If it has one cell layer, we say it is simple. If it has more than one cell layer, we say it is what? Stratified. So, for simple, you can have the shape being flat or squamous or square-like called cuboidal or taller than wide which we call columnar. And if it is stratified, you only use the topmost layer and the shape of that topmost layer to describe that kind of epithelium. So if there's a stratification where the topmost layer is squamous or flat, you say it is what stratified squamous. If the topmost layer is cuboidal, you say it is what stratified cuboidal and so on. There's another type that uh, hangs in the balance between simple and stratified because it will look like it is stratified and yet you can count uh, separate layers because all the cells sit on the basement membrane but not all of them reach the surface you call such um, uh, epithelia the pseudo stratified columnar epithelia which is usually found in the respiratory system now the epithelia we have described can be found in several structures okay being it organs, glands, um, uh, coverings, and, and the linings, and so on and so forth, okay? 
So they are peculiar to specific areas of the body and they are related to the function. Okay, so the function of that part of the area with its epithelium will um, demand whether it should be simple or stratified and whether it should be squamous or what, cuboidal or whether it should be columnar or not. So most of the time, if it's an area which needs protection, then you talk of what stratification, so that you increase the number of cells there to resist or withstand any abrasion or erosion or um, harshness, okay, from the environment, all right? So the skin, for instance, is exposed to the environment, the sun, ultraviolet, rays, and what have you. It is stratified squamous. The vagina is stratified squamous because of the intercourse and the coitus that occur in that organ. Because of the back and forth penetration, you need stratification to reinforce the area. If it's just simple, it's going to tear and then cause damage to that structure. So always bear in mind that for every epithelium, it is related to its function. If it is for simple passage of oxygen, you will need a simple epithelium to enhance the passage of the, 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 the substance, in this case, oxygen. So in the alveoli, for instance, you will need a, a simple a squamous. Now, epithelial cells have several characteristics, okay? I have mentioned some of them in my introduction. One is the fact that it sits on a flat surface known as a basement membrane. The other is that it can be either a, a one cell layer or what several cell layers. Others are the fact that they are avascular, okay? They are avascular, which means that they do not have their own blood supply. So think about it. How are they going to survive if they don't have their own blood supply? There should be something to give, all right? So think about that. So that's one of the characteristics. Again, I've mentioned that depending on the number of cell layers, you can also describe or characterize an epithelia. I've also talked about the shape of the cells, okay? And then also, they are polarized, okay? So they have apical uh, domains, they have basal domains and lateral domains. So these are like points of contact, okay? We have the top part of the cell sitting on the basement membrane and then the base of the cell which is actually in touch with the basement membrane itself and because there are several layers sitting on that uh, flat surface it means that you have another cell joining on the lateral side so we say that it has apical basal and what lateral domains now some of these apical domains may have surface specializations like cilia and hair or microvilli then also the epithelia can regenerate okay or uh, renew itself all right so these are seven major characteristics that you have to remember uh, when you talk about epithelia all right so um, bear in mind that aspect of it we will continue later and look at the other portions of the characteristics in details thank you